After years of caterwauling by VW enthusiasts, Volkswagen finally brought the hottest Golf to the U.S., the Golf R. This guy demotes the GTI to vice president in this country, but is it the right choice when you're going to go CNET style? Let's drive this 2012 Golf R and check the tech. Now, if you want to spot a Golf R, aside from the little teeny badges that live around the body, look at the butt. You've got center-mounted dual exhaust outlets, dead giveaway. Also, look for a lower stance on the car, mild body kit. Under the skin, there's more power out of the engine, six-speed only, sports suspension, all-wheel drive. Okay, now our Golf R is missing one key option package, the navigation and sunroof thing. You know, real logical combination. Mm, I don't know. But without that, we still have a touchscreen media head unit. And you got all the sources you need and one or two that you don't. AM and FM both have HD capability as well. Your satellite radio functionality, good readout here. You get good readouts of the various station information and such. Under your media tab, you got the four main acts here. CD is a six disc integral changer right up here at the top. Very nice. SD card, yeah, that's one of those I mentioned that you don't need. Media input refers to this thing, the MDI connector, which is an Audi Volkswagen thing. Now, the one I've got in this car, as you can see, still has the traditional 30 pin iOS connector for an iPhone or an iPod Touch. I've had to adapt it to this iPhone 5 right here, and as you can see, it works fine. We're seeing no issues with logic, control, or screen readout. Now, because you're using this MDI connector and not a USB jack like a lot of other cars do, you're going to have to buy different pigtails here for, let's say, a USB female jack if you want to plug in a thumb drive or any other device. This is a relatively old school backwards idea right now. I talked to Volkswagen this morning and so far nothing on the horizon to bring a lightning cable to this port, so you are going to have to use this adapter. Uh, this whole mess in the console is not very friendly. Here with this iPhone on a cable, I've got nowhere to put it, so it just kind of has to hang there. Not real elegant, to be honest. And of course, finally, you've got Bluetooth streaming audio, which looks good. Nice use of meta tags. The logic and the response is kind of pokey, but that's at least with my Android 4.0.4 phone. You may have different results. If you get the NAV package, you're also going to get a better audio system. We have this uh, interface here for the bass, treble, volume, and fader and such, but the Dyn Audio 300 watt eight speaker rig comes with the navigation upgrade as well. And at this moment, let me get up on my soapbox. Not so much picking on VW as almost every car maker. Why do you put these kinds of settings on a touchscreen? Knobs do it better. They're cheap and they're proven. Yes, you got to put some additional parts in, I guess. But dealing with digging through menus and all this poke, poke, poke nonsense for bass and treble or dragging these around, that's not better than knobs. That's worse. This is screen interface for screen interfaces sake. <laughs> Now, an R is basically a GTI on steroids under the hood. Same basic iron block aluminum head, two liter intercooled turbo engine, but with more oomph, bigger turbo, hotter tuning. 256 horse, 243 foot pounds of torque. Gets this 3,300 pound car to 60 in about 5.6 seconds, and it also delivers 1927 MPG. Not bad. Those numbers are 56 higher on the horsepower for this car and 36 higher on the torque. Substantial increases. Now, all R's are all-wheel drive, GTI's are not. All R's come with a six-speed manual and that's it. GTI's can also get a DSG automated dual clutch. And what I like about the Golf R is it's kind of meatiness. There's nothing fussy about this car. Same can be said for the GTI. That's a German DNA thing, and it's certainly not lost in this variant. The turbocharging in this car, bigger turbo, it's doing more of a boost job, but it's not ending up being laggier. Put it this way, it's not ending up being laggier than I'd like. I don't have a GTI here to compare it to, but this car has got good power delivery, not frantic, but substantial. Now, since you only have a six-speed manual to play with, it better be a good one. This one is. The clutch and gearbox action are pretty darn good. I'm not real crazy about this sort of popping in and out of each gear. Uh, I would like a smoother engagement, but that may wear in with time. 
Another nice thing about this car is the power is not too much. In other words, you can drive it flat out when you really want to have fun with it, and you're not going to get exited off the orbit of the Earth. It's substantial power, but not goofy power. Ride quality in this car is actually quite nice. Firm, well planted, you definitely feel a nice leveling sports suspension, but without the uh, nagging road inputs that I had recently in, let's say, the Nissan Altima, which also had its own variant of a firm suspension, but it was just constantly needling you through the bottom of the car. The bottom line, I don't know if this car is any more fun than a GTI. You gotta be pushing it pretty hard to get that all-wheel drive system, which in this car is built for performance, not for off-road traction so much, to really get the benefit of that. It's really kind of a track car, which I don't know if you're gonna use in that respect so much. Okay, let's price this bad boy. We have a 2012, 2013 prices are what I'm telling you. Just under 34 base for the two-door. They've also got a four-door. Kind of doesn't make sense to me in an R, but to your money. The best deal out there, though it's kind of a weird package, is $1,500 for navigation, the power glass roof, keyless access, and the Dyn Audio audio upgrade. It's a great price, though I'm not a huge fan of the head unit in general, but at that price, I can become one. The other options you've got on here are all pretty much non-tech. This car is about 36, CNET style.